Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Endoplex here, back with another Borderlands 4 video. We're going to be talking about Borderlands 4 today. And I am going to be discussing the 10 things, in my opinion, that are the most important things we need to see for our up-and-coming release game in 2025, Borderlands 4. This is definitely a long-awaited game. Borderlands 3 was not filled with the best reception I have ever seen and so I am really hoping Borderlands 4 is going to truly shine and give us something really special combining the best aspects of all the games together to make something truly special so it is going to be in no particular order I'm just going to start listing them off for you here now but before I do I will just let you know that I'm an idiot and I can't count so there are going to be two number fours and two number sevens because for some reason in my brain I couldn't count to ten while ranting about this video. So enjoy 12 things I would like to see in Borderlands 4. And also the gameplay you're going to be seeing in the background is some gameplay I did of the Borderlands 2 mod Roguelands done by Jolts Dude and various other content creators. I'll put a link to that down below if you want to check out that mod. It is a super fun mod and I thoroughly recommend you do so. So check it out and I will get back to rambling. Number one, we desperately need dedicated loot sources. Now, if you don't know what this means, basically in Borderlands 3, right at the start when Borderlands 3 was released, there was pretty much no dedicated loot sources, as in Mr. Jingle Bob over in the Arid Badlands drops the thunder weapon, okay? Put it for example. And he has a 10% chance to drop this weapon. So if you farm him enough, you will get this weapon. That is good. I can go to set enemy, farm said enemy to get his weapon and then feel happy because I've achieved his weapon. Now Borderlands 3 did later introduce this into the game, but there were so many legendary weapons and not enough unique enemy types or unique mini boss enemies in Borderlands 3. The, all of the loot pools were super oversaturated, so they all had like maybe two or three drops. And then these drops were like, I feel like some of them were like 50% chance to drop. They were just incredibly high, as well as the world drop chance in Borderlands 3 just being absolutely astronomically high. So it really just felt underwhelming. You kill an enemy and you see six different legendaries pop out. It sort of removes that, that legendary feeling, that sense of, wow, I've really obtained a sort of rare weapon or an interesting, unique weapon when I'm just getting six of them spawn out of any random enemy. So dedicated loot farming sources is, for me, in Borderlands 4, an absolute must. It, it adds so much to the game and makes it super interesting and gives you purpose to farm different enemies, not just, oh, let's farm the best like chest for random world drops because eventually we'll get the one we want that's just super boring to me i'd rather go farm designated enemies number two is gonna be storyline now borderlands 2 story was great borderlands 1 was a bit weird it was pretty okay but nothing really to write home about same with the pre-sequel was fine pre-sequel did a pretty good job on story i'd say similar to borderlands 2 borderlands 3 was just horrible pretty much the whole way through there were very few actual story decisions that i found interesting like i, I just couldn't believe that at the end of the game uh, spoilers for borderlands 3 but you have this sort of power dynamic between tyrene and troy and i really thought that troy was gonna betray tyrene and come over to our side and then help fight his sister who's gone kind of crazy with power and it's become like too much and actually we need to take it down. That would have been cool. It, it's like story progression, character progression. It would have been super interesting to see. We didn't get that. We got trash. We got things like Ava who just, I don't want to talk about her. Maya dying. Okay, it's good to have characters die, but don't have them dying in like a meaningless way when she could have easily been saved while our Vault Hunters just stood in a cutscene not existing. And it's super weird, super jarring, doesn't make sense, and it all contributes to a really bad story. Now, story is not the most important thing in a Borderlands game. I, I think it's a close second behind gunplay and gun type, gun quality and endgame. 
but the story needs to be there to get you interested into wanting to play more it's seriously a massive driving factor of playing these games you know if you're not a hardcore borderlands player like me you might just experience the story and then be done with the game and so if that's not good that puts you on a negative and doesn't make you even want to look at considering any of the other games so i think it's really important to have a good story for borderlands 4 whatever they decide to do don't bring handsome jack back he's amazing but we need someone different we need another good villain or a good few villains a good few allies all that sort of good stuff number three this is related to the story but i still feel is super important we need some way to be able to skip dialogue and skip cutscenes for our new playthroughs. So you have the normal playthrough. This should all be just a normal playthrough. You, you can't skip forward any story. You can't do any of that. You can't skip through any dialogue. All of that you should have to watch through. I understand that. You want to have to have the player watch through and understand the story. But for our new Vault Hunter mode, our UVHM mode, we should have the ability to skip forward dialogue. Because if you've ever watched like a true Vault Hunter mode playthrough of Borderlands 2, for example, a vast majority of it is just waiting around for dialogue to happen so that you can check off the question mark and proceed to the next objective. Now, either, okay, allow us to skip this dialogue or skip cutscenes, that would be great. Or alternatively, just deliver them in a different way. You do not have to have the player standing there waiting to receive the quest objective, standing there twiddling their thumbs, how about if I've got to go, you know, pick up 10 skag tails, okay, tell me the story, you know, oh, crazy Earl wants his skag tails so he can make a lovely risotto for his new wife that he's just met. Okay, amazing. Tell me all that story. I want to hear it. It's great. It's funny. It's going to be great. But give me the objective. Go get the five skag tails. Put it up in the top left and then while i'm going to get these tell me about the story tell me about what's going on relay it over echo net we've got the echo net it's in the game so just relay me that as i'm off going to get these things give me the objective first and then tell me all about it so i can make my way to it while listening to the dialogue i think that's a great idea you do get a few little instances of that in borderlands 3 but so much of it is just wait around for this di dialogue and Oh, go talk to Lilith again because she needs to talk to you back on the bridge when she could just echo radio you and talk to you. Why do you have to travel, fast travel, more loading screens, more unnecessary bloat? I don't like it. Let's get rid of it. Number four, I think this goes without question. We need multiplayer. Borderlands is massively a multiplayer game. Please, for the love of God, do not do what Halo Infinite did and make it a single player game. That would just completely destroy so many of the interesting and fun aspects of Borderlands. Primarily for me, Borderlands is a multiplayer game. I started playing it on couch co-op with my brother when I was younger. That's what got me into it. And so many people nowadays just don't seem to value the sort of love that people have for these multiplayer games. Don't make it a single player only story. Don't make it a single player story with a... A multiplayer side of objective to, 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 don't just make it a co-op game one to four players maybe more if you've got more but i presume it's going to be four vault hunters one to four players please let that happen we don't necessarily need couch co-op because there is a lot of online player nowadays as much as i hate to admit it the vast majority of multiplayer gameplay is online i would still love for there to be a feature of couch co-op do I think it's 100% necessary? No, it would just be nice to see. But co-op in general is 100% necessary for Borderlands 4. You look at what Halo Infinite did and look how they are now. Okay, it's not all to do with the fact that they did not have multiplayer, but there's a... And when I say multiplayer, I mean the campaign story multiplayer, but that is a vast driving force as to why the game is basically dead now. So do not do that, whatever you do. Number four, we talked about legendary dedicated loot sources at the start but another thing that borderlands 4 desperately needs is pearlescence please oh god please bring back pearlescence i don't need some random story spiel as to why they can't add the color of pearlescent rarity in the game because it's going to add too much data what it just it's complete nonsense it doesn't make any sense add us some really strong super powerful pearls that are super super rare to get Give us some end game grind that we can look forward to. Challenge Borderlands 1 did pearls and they were good on the rarity front. Super rare. It felt really good to get a pearl. 
most of them kind of sucked, so that wasn't great. But Pearls in Borderlands 1 were probably the best they, were, they have ever been, and that was the very first game. Pearls in Borderlands 2 were kind of equally as annoying as Borderlands 1, because the only way you can get them is from just farming tubbies, which is an annoying thing to do. Okay, if you get a random tubby and they happen to drop you a pearl, that's pretty cool. But having them be your only source, pretty much, of getting pearls outside of very rare circumstances, it's just, it sucks. You need to lock pearls maybe behind just super, super rare world drops. That would be cool. Or behind, like, big raids. You know, your sort of Maliwan takedowns, that sort of thing. Borderlands 3 did those Maliwan takedowns super, super well. And if they put pearl essence maybe behind those or behind a boss that you can fight out of those separately on a rare chance it just gives you something to strive for and then make it the pearls are good make it so that they are really really good because you have to be rewarded for grinding out so much to get this pill maybe not even super powerful good but make them like crazy unique crazy interesting things that they do legendaries already do some really insane things but you've got to make pearls that like little bit better because they're gotta i feel like they need to be in the game and they have to be better. Borderlands 2, the pearls, just universally pretty much sucked. There were very few good pearls in the game. And those good pearls were obviously saturated in a loot pool that houses 10 other pearls. All really rare to get from farming tubbies. Your chances of getting the one you want is just absolutely horrible. So, I think that's about says it. I want pearls back in Borderlands 4. I want them to be awesome. I want them to be super rare. Give us some end game grind. For number five, speaking of end game grind, I would love to see things like the Maliwan takedown return. I thought, and also actually the trials in Borderlands 3, there, there were those like prophecy trial things at the end. Can't remember what they were called. What are they called? Yeah, trial of survival, trial of persistence, that sort of stuff, whatever. Those at the end, I actually thought were pretty good. I liked the idea of having this end game gauntlet that you have to run through that progressively gets harder as you go through it until you get to a final big boss and you have to kill the boss and then you get a good chance of some really rare loot i like that idea i think the maliwan takedown in borderlands 3 was great i thought the other one the guardian takedown in borderlands 3 was good but just kind of too long it just felt like i don't think you need it to be like 35 45 minutes i think you can stick to quite a comfortable 10 to 15 minutes if you go in quickly to be able to run through these things i don't think it has to be longer than that because some people don't have super long to grind and also the penalty for dying is too high that it makes you think oh what's the point unless you set some really interesting and rare rewards behind such as pearlescence so bring back some maliwan takedowns i want to see those sort of raids, I want to see just standalone raid bosses. I want to see little gauntlets. Plenty of endgame activities to keep us going. And just go crazy. Just go super interesting bosses, unique encounters, that sort of stuff. There's so much, many things you can do with it. So I'd love to see that come back, but with a bit of a twist. And take all the good things about the Borderlands 3 versions of it and just bring them forward to Borderlands 4 with some updates. I think it would be really cool. Number six, and this is a big one, we need the end game to be scaled correctly. Borderlands has always, always, always had a horrible problem when it comes to the end game scaling. It's either super overtuned or doesn't feel difficult at all, like in Borderlands 1. Feels pretty well super easy all the way through. If you don't get over leveled and you farm properly, that sort of stuff. You know, if you're if they're over level, then it's obviously going to be hard. Borderlands 2, by the time you get to the OP levels, is just ridiculously difficult. And not in a way that's like, oh, it's so difficult to do anything, but in a way that I have to use this specific gun with this specific other gun. Otherwise, I literally stand no chance. 99% of all the other weapons in the entire game are totally useless. And it locks me into using this one thing. Everything one-shots me and brings me down to health gate. That's awful. Borderlands, the pre-sequel was probably the best balanced Borderlands game I think they have ever released. It doesn't often get talked about enough because the pre-sequel doesn't really get, I feel like doesn't get the love it deserves. Pre-sequel had a pretty good story. It had probably, in my opinion, the best 
balancing for the end game. The skill trees were fantastic. All of the vault hunters were super unique. The problem was is the dedicated loot sources. We didn't have any pretty well any dedicated loot sources and the end game there was barely anything to do. So that's really what brought the pre-sequel down. But actually I think the pre-sequel in general was a very good game. Just needed some pretty major tweaks in kind of stupid areas. But the balancing of the pre-sequel was fantastic. Borderlands 3's balancing was okay, but it was just super annoying. Yes, it rendered a lot of weapons useless, but Borderlands 3 brought in the mayhem system, giving us... Oh god, it's so annoying. Enemies drop corrosive puddles on the floor when they walk around, or they have a little robot that flies next to them and makes them immune to any damage before you kill the robot, or puts a chain between you that just downs you if you go near the enemy. It's annoying. It's annoying. I don't need to be playing 4D chess on the ground while trying to shoot my guns. Yes, give me some difficulty. Yes, maybe make some interesting and unique things, but do not tie them directly to that you'll see 99 percent of borderlands 3 players nowadays now we have mayhem 11 just play on mayhem 11 because the mayhem 10 modifiers are so annoying to play with awful scale the game correctly at the end and that doesn't have to mean that you get the situation now because they scale everything now to try and make everything the end game some weapons in the early game are just completely busted absolutely ridiculous and those same guns are the ones that are good in the end game. And then the guns are like, they're all right in the early game, but totally unusable in the end game. The, the balancing is all off. And I'm not saying every single weapon needs to be viable, but you just cannot have that much of a disparity between weapons in the game. I just think it's stupid. So yeah, balance the end game correctly, please. That would make it more enjoyable for everyone. Number seven, directly tied onto the end game. Oh my God. Do not do what Borderlands 3 and I haven't even spoken about it, but Tiny Tina's Wonderlands did. To a certain extent, Borderlands 2. But what Borderlands 3 did that really annoyed me is when the first when the game first came out, I played it loads. It was fun. I had a great time. I got to the end game. I farmed out all my good gear, all my good weapons. That was cool. And then a couple months later, I think it was, they dropped the level up pack, gave us whatever was it like six extra levels or something no it wasn't that it was like three extra levels and then rendered our old items basically useless now i've got to grind out for all new items and stuff which there is a sense of okay do that but don't do it so early afterwards and don't release so many little dlcs in quick succession because that means that every three months now i've got to grind out new gear stuff that i perfectly farmed i've got to grind it out new stuff it's just frustrating. I think I did it like three or four times. It had like three like three level upgrades or something like that. Gave me three different levels at a time. I'm getting three skill points and having to re-grind my entire inventory. The way that I ended up playing Borderlands 3 was I waited until everything had released. After I initially played it, I had waited for everything to release and then just played it all through and then farmed out my endgame stuff at the end. Because having to refarm everything over and over again as the difficulty increases as you get more levels is just frustrating for me. If they're going to add a DLC pack, make it a meaningful like 15 level jump or something like that. And just only do one or something like that. Only do one level increase. We don't need it. Yes, add loads of new storylines and stuff like that with DLC. That's all great new weapons, but... Don't give us a stupid level jump. That's it's just frustrating. Number seven. Speaking of Borderlands Three, still since it is our most recent game, we do not want new skill trees. Now, new skill trees are fine, okay, as like a little director's edition pack, whatever. I think universally, the vast majority of the player base would prefer two new DLC characters instead of a new skill tree for all the characters. Because the problem with a new skill tree is I've got my fully maxed out flak, for example. And, oh great, you've given me a new skill tree. What can I do with this skill tree? I can just respec straight away. I can spec every single point down that skill tree. I can see it all straight away. I can use it straight away. And by half an hour in, I'm like, okay, I feel like I know everything about this new skill tree. What, what now? 
okay, there might be some new OP things in there. That's cool, but I, I have no sense of progression. I already had access to everything. It just doesn't... I, I hated it, to be honest with you. It didn't add any value for me at all in Borderlands 3 having these new skill trees. I didn't like it. If you get a new character, you start at level 1. It allows you to... It makes you want to replay the story with that character. You get new voice lines, dialogue options, stuff like that. New action skills, loads of different abilities... You've got a, a whole new character to play with. Even just one new DLC character I would have vastly prefer, preferred than the extra skill trees we got. Uh, I do not think that the skill tree is anywhere near as valuable as a new character. So please go back to what you were doing in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. Give us some new DLC characters. Work hard on them. Some of the DLC characters are the most beloved characters in Borderlands. You're talking Krieg. You're talking Jack the Doppelganger in the pre-sequel. Both absolutely amazing characters. Give us some of them. Give us another reason to play through your story. To play through the content. And to level up a character from the start. And learn about how the mechanics work. Learn about how the skills work. What weapons are good with this character? Stuff like that. Loads of interesting interactions you could bring with a new character, which you just can't really do with a new skill tree. Number eight, we have anointments in Borderlands 3. Now, I think I am going to do an entirely separate video on this, on the problem with Borderlands 3's endgame. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd enjoy that video. Like and sub, all that good stuff. But... We do not want to see anointments in Borderlands 4. Oh my god, do not give us anointments. Anointments were probably the most damaging thing in the entire Borderlands franchise thus far. More so than the story, I'd say. The story is crazy important. But what anointments did is pretty much devalue the worth of every single legendary in the game. Because I was no longer farming for legendaries. I was farming for a little bit of text along the bottom that said... Gives 200% damage after I reload. How is that fun? I want the reward for getting my super rare legendary or whatever to be the legendary itself. I don't want it to pop out. See, it's got a crap anointment and be like, oh, well, let's just farm it again for a different text. It sucks. Anointments are horrible. I hated them ever since they came out. They returned in Wonderlands. They sucked in Wonderlands as well. Please do not bring anointments. Just bring rare legendaries in the game. What it happened in Borderlands 3 is every legendary is super, super common, but getting the perfect anointment on that legendary is super, super rare. But the anointments are, like, more powerful than the guns themselves. So it's just, it's so stupid. I'm just farming the same thing over and over again, not for the legendary to pop out, that bit of dopamine that comes out when you get your legendary, but for a bit of text on the bottom of the screen, it sucks. Anointments are awful. Do not bring them back for Borderlands 4, I beg you. Moving on to number nine, and I don't know if this is just my opinion or whether you guys share the same sentiment, but I think Borderlands 3 in general did a pretty good job with mobility. I think vaulting is cool and fun. I think sliding is also cool and fun. Do you know what I hate? I hate that the fastest way to play Borderlands 3 is to just slide around everywhere like a lunatic because I got a relic that gives me 128% increased slide speed. And so all I do nowadays is slide around Borderlands 3 because that's the best way to get around. It it's annoying. The movement upgrades in Borderlands 3 were fantastic. All of that interesting stuff. Maybe even add some, some new stuff. Maybe give us the ability to double jump. I don't know. Maybe give us the ability to charge up a jump. Maybe give us a wall run. I don't know. I think all of it would be good. But please don't tie special speed movement to certain weird actions. Don't tie increased movement speed to wall running. Because all I'm going to do in Borderlands 4, if I want to do anything, is I'm going to run across the wall the whole time. Because that's the fastest way to get around. Just give me... Oh, you get 50% increased movement speed while you're running with your action skill out. Amazing. I check my action skill out. I'm moving faster. That's great. The slide is just so annoying. Running and sliding everywhere. I don't like it. I like the movement systems in Borderlands 4. Every Borderlands game has done movement better and better. And I would expect Borderlands 4 to do the same again. But don't tie some movement speed, movement ability gimmick to a certain relic or something like that because i feel like i can't use anything else if i'm running the game normally because it's just slow and it sucks so i don't like that tie it to something else or just to be honest don't give anything out at all if you've got a good movement system in general tie it to like a kill skill 
reward you for killing an enemy. Tie it to maybe like a perk in your tree for some of the characters, maybe. Don't tie it to a relic or anything like that. I don't like the way that that works. It annoys me. I've said my piece. Moving on with number 10. I think I'm going to have to say, please make the performance of Borderlands 4 good from the start. I know pretty much no game comes out with perfect performance on everything. The game's got to be widely tested on loads of different computers and little patches and stuff like that for little things. But honestly, Borderlands 3, when I got that game, I've, I've never been so excited to get a game in my entire life. I got it with my brother on the Xbox and... Oh boy, was it horrible. We had had like a week of school with Borderlands 3 and we played it split screen on the Xbox when it first came out. And when I say we could barely get over 15 frames a second if we were lucky, honestly, it was horrible. The experience day one of Borderlands 3 on Xbox was absolutely trash. And I know it was still not great on PC and other things like that. That puts such a massive dampener on the game now i'm a massive borderland nerd i love borderlands anyway so we persevered and we pushed through and i enjoyed what i did on borderlands 3 to begin with but it's such a massive pot off it makes everything so much worse just test your game properly make sure it's good for release make sure everything works don't give me too much particle spam stuff like that I don't need to be blinded every second of gameplay which is going to be dropping my frames everything like that even if, to be fair, even if the game runs amazingly, but I'm still getting blinded, screen shaky, everything like that every second, allow me to turn the particles down. Allow me to turn off the screen shake. Just give me those little quality of life things that would make the experience so much better and make it run well on every device you're releasing it on. Make it run well, for God's sake. It, it just takes a little bit of testing. I'm not a developer, but games manage to do it, so... There is no excuse as to why you cannot have a perfectly running game on release. If you've got to dial about the graphics a bit to make it happen, do it. Borderlands has never been super known for its graphics. They've looked better and better over the years, but it's still got this nice cell shaded Borderlands art style, which is shouldn't ever be too graphically intensive. So just dial it back, make it run better. Everyone would prefer the game run smoother than looks better. Smoother is better than looking better. So please make it run better. And I think that is going to be about it for now. Let us know down below if you want me to do another one of these, what I would like in Borderlands 4. I could probably think of a hundred different things I would like in Borderlands 4 that we haven't seen in the other games or that I would like to have been brought back. So let us know and let me know in the comments what you guys think you would like in Borderlands 4 and whether you share some of my same opinions. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.